Thank you all for coming. Hey, what's your religion? Can you show me your religion in the Bible? Can you show me your denomination in the Bible? God created commandments, not religion. He never, not once, dealt with the religious people. You know, the ones that was called scribes and Pharisees. You remember them? Okay. Do you see how he dealt with them? He rebuked them. He yelled at them. And he called them names. God does not. God doesn't. God does not like religion. Because he offers salvation okay. instead. Religion says, I'm going to do this or that as a means of getting to God. Look at the arrogance of humans. It takes a very arrogant person to even contemplate slapping your mama. But that's the same spirit. It's the same frame of mind to try to say what you're going to do to get to God and God must accept it. All right. Most religions have a person that they deify and they subconsciously worship that person. They duplicate the behavior and the habits of that person. If he prayed five times a day. Majority of people's religion is just a learned behavior from your parents. You do what they do because they told you to. That's good, that's Let's good. take a poll. Let's take a poll. Write down your religion right now. Huh? And then write down your parents' religion. Is it the same? Yeah. Many people have exclaimed that they will be ostracized huh? if they were ever even thought about leaving the family's religion. In some cases, your family will ostracize you if you left their church yeah. or their denomination. Your own family will turn your back on you if you join the another denomination. How can you? They'll say, My, our denomination is right. Yep. Right? Your, your denomination is right, right? Your say. religion is right, ain't it? Most religions mimic behavior of the person that they follow. If he didn't eat meat, if he says don't eat meat on Fridays, even though that's not in the Bible, there's nowhere, it's not a, there's no biblical reference for it whatsoever. I'm just going to remain religious because that's what I have to do to get that prize called heaven, right? Uh -huh. Now, you Christians have the same consideration. Christians profess as an attempt or a goal to get that prize called heaven or to be just like Christ. I'm going to do the same thing, right? So why are there so many Christian denominations? If everybody's doing the same thing. We're all reading the word of God. We're all talking to God. Why are there so many denominations? Everybody's religion or denomination is right, right? Everybody's place of worship is the right place of worship, right? The denomination that I taught you, a parent speaking to their kid, from birth is right. Everything else is wrong. Before I got saved, nobody invited me to church. Only after I got saved, their church is the best church to be. Why didn't you come to witness to me when I was in the world? Why didn't you invite me to your annual man's day or your annual convocation? Why bother me now when I'm already saved? Why don't you go invite a sinner to church instead? <laughs> today's church is in a bad situation. Can today's church, any church, any denomination, can you, your church turn out a sinner? What I mean by that? Can your church effectively take a sinner and turn him into a saint in whatever you feel is a reasonable amount of time? Six months, a year, whatever. Can I go to Skid Row? Can I go downtown? Can I go under the viaduct? Can I find a person that's still got a needle in their arm and bring him to your church? Can I get that person who doesn't have any pre-exposure to church? A person that don't smell good. A person that don't look good. Right. Can I bring that person to church that doesn't have any tithes? Amen. That don't have any money to give you? Yep. How about that person that don't even know proper church etiquette? When they pass the offering plate around, they don't even know you're supposed to tap it if you ain't got no money to put in there. <laughs> can I bring that person? What religion? What denomination? What church can an evangelist like myself send that person to with a reasonable amount of confidence? That that person, when I see them again, after they've left your church, after they left your denomination, what confidence do I have that I will be able to see that person transformed into somebody totally new? Can your church do that? Good question. Of course you're going to say your church can do that. What if this person got tired of their lifestyle? What if a lady going from man to man gets tired of it? What if a person worshiping idols 
realizes these dumb idols can't hear me. What if a husband no longer wants to cheat on his wife? What if a man wants to be a strong man on the inside and need direction on how his spirit should be? What if a person preparing crap right now on the spoon with tears in their eyes? What if they want this to be the last time? Can your religion help them? Can your religion help any of these people? Can your denomination help them? What religion? What denomination? What church should they go to? What church should I send them to? If religion is not going to help me with my sinful proclivities, then what's the point? Keep your stupid religion. I will give our call anonymous a try instead. Denominations is giving me an incorrect understanding of the plan of salvation. I don't care what denomination is. If they're giving me the incorrect understanding of what it takes to be saved, what's the point if I'm going to continue to go there and I'm still not saved? I don't want to go to hell from the church. Doesn't make any sense. Somebody said they'd rather go out in the world and have fun rather than go to hell from the church. But I'm trying to say, what's fun in the world? If you've really been transformed, why do you desire any of that filth that tried to kill you and separate you from God? Why do you still have taste buds that craves what separates you from God? In your church, in your religion, in your denomination, why are there 4,000 recognized religions in the world? Why are there over 1,100 denominations of Christianity? Why? There's only one Lord, one so Lord. somebody's wrong and somebody's lying. There's only one faith, yes. somebody's wrong and somebody's lying. There's not three baptisms, there's only one baptism. One. There's a lot of people wrong and a yes. lot of people lying. Now how is a person by themselves supposed to figure this out? Yep. Guess they better just wait till Sunday, find your church, you know, because it's the right one, right? Don't, it's the only one, and they're just supposed to just walk in and just join your church, and they're going to be all right, right? You know what God is looking for? Y'all know what God is looking for? He's looking for worshipers. God is looking for covenant keepers. God doesn't care about your religion. It's not biblical. So I'm not even going to deal with religion today. Unless you can show me your religion in the Bible. God doesn't care about your denomination. It's not biblical. Unless you can show me your denomination in the Bible. I'll wait. Notice I didn't say your doctrine. By the way, I only find one doctrine in the whole Bible. Huh? You can't show me your religion, can you? You can't show me your denomination, can you? But I can show you who God is coming back for. Man. I'm sure y'all wonder, who's these dudes? The Bible does not say God is coming back for the Baptists. God does not, the Bible does not say he's coming back for the Seventh-day Adventists, the Pentecostals, the Apostolics. Uh, Kojic. It doesn't say he's coming back for any religion or any denomination. These people, they started these denominations. You know that? Why? For what? I just want to be saved. I just want to go back with the Lord when he comes back. I don't want to have to figure out which one of these guys to follow, which one of their religions, which one of their denominations to be a part of. Who is God coming back for? If you don't tell me, I'm going to find out my own way. I'm going to climb. I'm going to kick. I'm going to climb my way up to heaven if I have to. I'm going to accept whatever religion that offers discipline or whatever religion offers some newfound knowledge or some wisdom. I'm going to lean on my own understanding. I'm going to join whatever denomination makes me feel comfortable. I'm going to join, if you don't tell me what I need to do, I'm going to join the next church that got nice people. And I'll end up walking aimlessly through life lost and not even knowing it. Isn't it bad enough to be lost? It's worse. Imagine being lost and you think you're in the right place. Just think about that. How will you ever find your way? So I'm going to emphatically say now, I do not believe in religion. I'm not even going to waste my time discussing it. If you're an atheist, I'm glad you came by my channel. Atheism is a religion, a religion whether you believe it or not, whether you want to accept that or not. This message isn't for you, so just click away. If you're in a religion and you think you want to challenge me in a comment war, go right ahead because I need it. I need the algorithms from YouTube. Keep commenting, keep liking, keep coming back. If you're Baptist, then I agree with you. <laughs> Everybody mad now, right? 
I agree with you because the Bible does say repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. That's the problem with religion. It doesn't have an option for my sins to be remitted. If you're Kojic, I agree with you. Because the Bible does say to wit that God was in Christ. If you want God's geographic location, look at Christ. He said, if you're looking for the Father, stop looking. If you've seen me, you've already seen the Father. Amen. So yes, I agree with you, Kojic. If you're Seven Day Adventist, I agree with you. Because Jesus prophesied somewhere around 40 years prior. So let me get this straight. Wait. We kept the Sabbath before Jesus was born. Uh -huh. We kept the Sabbath while Jesus was walking on earth. And the Bible is clear that we will all keep the Sabbath after Jesus returns again. But we don't keep the Sabbath now? Ooh. That makes sense? We're just going to skip over your life period. That's the only time we don't have to keep the Sabbath. How convenient. If you're Pentecostal, then I agree with you. Because there was a day of Pentecost. It was a feast that they had to celebrate. And Jesus promised them that I'm not going to leave you comfortless. In 50 days, that's what Pentecost means. In 50 days, he's going to keep his promise. And he did that. The Holy Ghost is necessary. It's not optional. He's mandatory. He's the only person that can physically step inside your soul, clean out your filthiness, clean you up from the inside out, Take out the very desire of sin, then set up residence inside of you and announce his arrival in a language that you've never been taught. God is the only person that can do that. With proof. That's the proof. That's the only power that can combat the, the devil. That's the only power that can combat the power of your own flesh. That's the only power that can bring your own flesh under subjection. It's the Holy Ghost. So why would you not want the power of God? Why would you not want a gift from God? God has given the Holy Ghost away why would you not want it? If you're yeah. apostolic, I agree with you too. Because yeah. that's the only approved doctrine in the entire Bible. Is the, the, the doctrine that the apostles taught. That's actually what it means. Doctrine means teaching. So the apostles' teaching is the apostles' doctrine. They take what they learn from God firsthand. While they walked with him, they ate with him, they slept under the same roof with him. And they took that and they preached it. They teached it. And they wrote it down in what we call today the New Testament or the New Covenant. Remember the word New Covenant. It's the same thing as New Testament. It's just a different time that they use different words. So, of course, we believe in following what the apostles taught because they were taught firsthand from Jesus himself. And that was his plan. His plan was not to come and teach the whole world. His plan was to come and teach 12 um, uh, apostles and have them go out and teach the whole world. If you're Jehovah Witness... Now, I'm not sure if Jehovah Witness is considered a Christian denomination. But I certainly agree with you. How do you receive the power of the Holy Ghost and not tell anybody? How was your life transformed from a low-down, dirty, scumbag, Sin. crooked sinner? <laughs> How are you transformed from that life to an overcoming, powerful saint of the most high God, and you didn't tell a sinner about it. The Bible is clear that right after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall be a witness unto me. Yeah. For the Bible says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. So we agree with you. Here. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, uh -oh. come on, I agree with you. <laughs> Because so far, they're the only ones that believe you must keep the commandments beyond just the Ten Commandments. Of course, we have to obey the statutes of the Bible, the teachings of the apostles, the examples of Jesus, and the parameters that he set in the Old and the New Testament. My favorite scripture. What's my favorite scripture, y'all? And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his pleasing sight. In his yes. Do you want to please God? Do you have a desire to please God? If you're not getting your prayers answered, you know why? Are you doing the things that's pleasing in his sight? Are you keeping the commandments? The next verse says, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandments. I need you to show me where that is in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. I thought we only had to keep the Ten Commandments. I thought we didn't have to keep any laws. Verse number 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him. 
So if you don't keep the commandments, how can you say God dwells in you? Right. If you're Catholic, all right. If you're non-denomination, if you're non-denomination Christian, I agree with you. Probably because you have non-denomination. The Bible is clear. Acts 11, verse 26, it says, And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. Antioch is uh, Turkey today. And it came to pass that the whole year some of the church assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples, the disciples were called Christians. The disciples were called Christians. So these apostles, each one of them was from a tribe, was from one of the 12 tribes. They were called Christians. So, okay, I agree with you on that. God created commandments, though. Not religion. God creates rules and boundaries, but mankind don't want to be governed. From birth, you're rebellious. Yep. Every parent knows that you spend a lot of brain power trying to break that rebellious spirit out of your kid because you get your kid hurt. Or worse, you have to teach your kid not to play with fire. Okay. You have to give it to them. With, you have to teach them that lesson with some punishment so they'll get it. It's for their benefit. The guidelines God set for us are not grievous. They're not hard, but it's mandatory. God doesn't like religion. He went through a lot of stuff to provide salvation for us. He paid for it with his own blood. And mankind created denominations, not God. So what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to figure out where to go. I'm trying to figure out what church for my family to join. I'm trying to figure out a place for these people that I witnessed to, these, the person that I told you with the needle in his vein, the person that I told you has the crack spoon in his hand. What am I supposed to send these people? What are they supposed to do? If I light a candle and I pray to a dead saint, am I saved now? If I travel across the whole world and I touch this rock, will I lose the desire for sin? If I let you put me down in this chlorinated water, will I be forgiven? While I agree with some things, not everything, well, I agree with some things from each of these denominations. These denominations are the ones that are in our communities. That's why I chose these. I did mention before, I will never, ever waver on one thing. A couple of things. I'm only going to worship Jesus. Amen. Yahweh. Yahshua. God Almighty. I'm not bowing down to nobody or nothing. I'm not praying to one God and his mama. It's God that died for me. How about you? It's God that set me free. It's God that's coming back for me. It's God the one that shed his own blood for me. It's God the one that takes time out for me. The name of our God, the name of my God is Jesus. That's why your religion won't work for me. If your God didn't die on a tree, we're talking about two different entities. And my God trumps your God and you're going to bow down to him one day. Remember I said it. I'm not lighting any candles. I'm not worshiping any dumb idols. I'm not deifying any humans. Mary had to get the Holy Ghost just like everybody else. Now what? I believe God is the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of the repenter. I just made that word up. Those that fully repent and surrender their life to God, those that are completely sorry. The Bible says godly sorrow work at repentance. You have to be so sorry for every sin that you committed that you hurt God's heart by committing these sins. If you can tell me a better gift than the gift of the Holy Ghost, once you're fully repented, God, now you're a candidate to receive the best gift from Almighty God. God will be with you. He will be present with you forever. You don't even have to say amen. You can just say, God, I'll be right back. When you're praying, God is always with you. You don't have to call him up. He's with you all the time. That's the greatest gift that anybody can give you is the power of the Holy Ghost, eternal life. Through hard times, you need a comforter. Through sickness, through heartache, through tribulation, through poverty, through despair. If your religion doesn't offer the physical power of God, we don't have a conversation. All we have is a bunch of beliefs and a bunch of saying from a bunch of people, but I need power. Amen. So what am I supposed to do? A person is tired of sin. is supposed to just pick one, right? Just pick an, either a religion or a denomination or pick a religion out of the religions or pick a denomination out of, out of denominations, right? Just pick one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, 
Pick a denomination. There you go. <laughs> or should I just show up at your place of worship, right? Because that's the place to be saved. Which denomination is right? They all say they're all right. You can go to any denomination. They're all going to say they're right. They're all going to say that we're right according to the Bible. We're, we have the truth. Of course they are. What is this? Don't ask. Don't ask. I'll give you a hint. They made a movie out of people searching in Africa to steal it. They made a series of movies about it. Why is this so precious? This is the Ark. I told y'all to remember this word. This is the Ark of the Covenant. This is the Ark of the Covenant given to God's chosen people. This Ark was where the presence of God used to dwell. Yep. Then God made a new covenant with the seed of the same people. You know what the new covenant is? They can search for this thing all they want. God don't dwell there anymore. He dwells in the souls of those people that kept his laws. For this is the covenant. Remember I told you to remember that word. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. That's your Bible that says that. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws. I thought we don't have to keep the laws anymore into their mind and I'm going to write them in their hearts. How do you do that? How does God do that? With the power of the Holy Ghost. And I will be to them. Who's the them? Those people that he made a covenant with. The people that he put his laws in. Those are the people that God's going to write their, his laws in their heart. And those are the people that God said, I'm going to be their God. And then he continued and said, and they shall be my people. I wonder if that's all you have to do. I wonder if you just have to be a part of this covenant. I wonder if you just have to be an ark for God to dwell in. I wonder if all you have to do is keep the commandments and you don't have to be a part of any religion or you don't have to claim any denomination. I wonder if all you have to do is be a covenant keeper. But keep in mind, you got to remember God will never dwell in an unclean vessel. The first time God deals with any people after the fall of Adam, after the garden, the first time he dealt with any people is when he led his people out of Egypt. When he did that, he made a, a blood covenant with them. Deuteronomy says, now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments with the Lord your God commanded you to teach. Okay. So God's covenant started with conditions. The conditions that you must keep these commandments. I'll be your God if you keep these commandments. That is the covenant. If you keep these commandments and these statutes and judgments. So let me get this straight. Let me make this plain. Salvation started with a covenant. Okay. All right. God is looking for worshipers. I told you God is looking for covenant keepers. God doesn't care about your religion. It's not biblical. Did I say it three times? Because y'all got it now. Show me in the Bible who God is coming back for. Show me where it says he's coming back for the Baptists. Does it say he's coming back for non-denominationals? No. He's coming back for those he made a covenant with. Read Psalms 50 verse 5. It says, gather my saints. Who are the saints? Together with me. Who are the saints? Let's see. Verse 5. It says, those that have made a covenant with me. Watch this. By sacrifice. All right, so I got a question for you then. Who did God make a covenant with by sacrifice? That's a good question, right? All right, let's find out. In Exodus 24, verse 8, it says, And Moses took the blood, what blood? The blood from a lamb, keep that in mind, and he sprinkled it on the people. What people? The people that God chose and brought them out of Egypt. Those are the people he sprinkled the blood on. Did he sprinkle blood on everybody? Did he sprinkle blood on the whole world? All right. And said, behold, that means look, the blood of the what? Covenant. The blood from that lamb is the blood of the covenant. Okay. Which the Lord had made with everybody. With you concerning all these words. Who are these people that he sprinkled the blood on? That's important. Let's find out. The Bible says, Leviticus 25 for they are my Baptists. Is that what it said? No. For they are my Pentecostals. No. It says, for they are my servants. 
which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, that they not be sold as bondmen. Somebody's going to be in trouble. Sell them as bondmen. Somebody's going to be in trouble. Listen, you don't have to be anything. But one, the only thing you have to be is one that serves God and keeps his laws. That's all you got to do. What does 25 says? Pretty much the same thing. For unto me, the children of Israel are what? Are servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. That's in your Bible. Go check. That's why I put the scripture on every slide. God started off with a covenant with his people sealed with lamb's blood. He creates a new covenant. He doesn't change anything. Stop saying that. He becomes a lamb. And then he requires that blood. Remember Moses sprinkled the blood on everybody else? Now he is the lamb and he requires that blood inside of you through the infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost. Dad, so on, John man. said, John saw some people going into heaven. You know, John the Revelator. Okay? He saw some people going to heaven and he asked, a, he asked a good question. Hey, who are these people? Who are the people that's going to heaven? This is in the future. And the angel that was with him said, all right, these people, oh, those people right there, I'll tell you who they are. These are people that think you don't have to obey the commandments anymore. No. He said, these are the people that are called Seventh-day Adventists. No. He said, these are the people that keep not past tense. He said, keep. Look at that word, keep. They keep, not they kept. These are the people that keep, present tense, the commandments. And if you don't have faith in Jesus, if you believe and worship someone else, you won't be a part of this group. Because the Bible says, and the faith of Jesus. What do you want me to do? I'm just reading the Bible. I'm just reading the scriptures. It's okay. This is the group of commandment obeying servants. That's the group of people that he saw. Law keeping servants. Now the apostolic, the apostolic doctrine, it does contain the covenants and the commandments. In fact, it's written to servants from a servant. What are you talking about? Okay, let's read Romans 1 and 1. Paul said, a what? A Seventh-day Adventist. Paul said, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. He's a servant first, separated unto God. He was a servant first. The apostles never called themselves an apostolic. No, they didn't. They called themselves servants. Paul and uh, Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ. Why is this word so hard if we're humble? If you humble yourself, that's being a servant to the Lord is not a hard word. Now, I know y'all love this scripture. Y'all quote it all day long. You sing songs about it all day long. It's probably the most quoted scripture in the church. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment thou shalt, con con shalt condemn. condemn, and then they stop. Let's keep going, because you didn't finish it. It says, this is the heritage of who? Of the servants of the Lord. Now, how many people knew that was in there? This is the heritage of the non-denominations. I can do this all day. This is the heritage of the Baptists, of the servants. All said, but now being made free from sin. Okay, so now I'm free from sin. So what do I do next? All says, but now being made free from sin and become servants. Y'all get my point? Psalm 34, the Lord redeemeth the soul of everybody. No, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. Do y'all get it? Y'all get what I'm trying to say, say here? Do you see where I'm going here? You go to the next one. The devil is a liar. Say that rebuke in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your power will not prevail here. God will always get the glory in this place, in this Zoom, in Jesus' name. I wish people would stop making it so hard to be saved. I wish people would stop adding their own ideology. I wish people would simply just go to the Bible. You don't have to add anything to it or take anything away. What does it mean when the Bible says, if a man serve me, tell me what this means, let him follow me. Stop worshiping these pastors. Follow God. Man. You keep getting disappointed. You keep getting church hurt. Stop following folk. Hurt. The arms of flesh will always fail you. Follow God. Worship God. When you go to church, open your own Bible. Read your own Bible. It says, and where I am, there shall also be my Pentecostals. No. 
It says, that's where my Kojic people would be. No. If I want to be where Jesus is, what do I have to do? But the Bible says, if a man serve me, let me let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servants be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hi. What's your religion? Is it in the Bible? Can you show me your denomination in the Bible? I'll wait. In the meantime, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to keep the covenant. I'm going to follow hard after him. I'm going to obey the words in this book. Being a servant means you have to deny your pride and simply become a servant of God. It's simple. A servant of God keeping the covenant. That simply means just keeping the commandments. That's all you got to do and live a life holy and please God. Praise the Lord, y'all. I really... Trust me with your, with your forgiveness Yeah, yeah